Hey guys, this is probably one of the biggest pieces of drama in 2019 so far, and it does give you a view of what professional Magic players are like. They're not as wholesome as many of you believe. You believe I'm the big bad lion, but I have ethics, I have standards, and there are certain things I wouldn't even consider and should any of my employees consider something like this, they would be immediately fired and I would actually pursue legal action against them as well. So let's talk about Owen. I've been a fan of Owen's for a while. I do like him as a pro magic player. And for the most part, unlike LSV, unlike other people, Frank, who are professional magic players, Jared, Alex, the, I can continue for two hours listing names. I haven't heard anything bad about Owen until recently. So what did Owen do that was so bad or what has he been accused of? We don't know yet. And there has been accusations from a Twitter, a Magic Pro Twitter female. And she is saying along the lines of, what Frank was doing. So you remember Frank, who's now a popular Twitch streamer and popular YouTuber, he would approach females at GPs, some of them teenagers, some of them incredibly young, invite them back to his hotel room for lessons, and then he'll text them afterwards saying how much he loved them. The problem is he was dating the most famous magic female at the time he was doing this behavior. But because he was a famous magic pro, he felt like, oh, if you're a female and you play magic, you must want to have sex with me. That is the mentality of many professional magic players. And I can tell you that I've talked to some of them in person. I've called them out on this channel relentlessly. And that's what they feel. Um, it's part of not never being popular. They're my age. So Magic was not popular when I was younger. Magic was not popular in middle school. It was not popular in elementary school. It was not popular in high school. And it was definitely not popular when I went to college. So when you talk about um, a scenario like this, you have people who were never put in positions of power being put maybe as a judge or in this case, a professional Magic player. And then they behave poorly so he was disqualified from the mythic championship his invitation is not a special invitation he's one of the professional magic players who are being paid a seventy thousand dollar salary he streams magic i was watching a stream to confirm that he did intend to go to this invitational there are no health related issues which everyone jumped to because the other implications that were being said are much much darker so wizard of coast said that they're going to replace him with brian david marshall who they have let go from a job but nonetheless that might be another video hey i know we're not going to give you steady pay but what if we gave you an invitation to a, a chance to win a million dollars why would someone like owen why would he not want this opportunity why would he be removed from the mythic invitation there has been speculation, and given what I know about certain Magic players, Ed, um, I'm, I'm not going to just go ahead and continue name, name names because a lot of it is not public, and I'm saving it for my documentary, which has been, uh, it's demonetized, but at least it's not like outright banned this time, so maybe I'll make that public. The accusations are that harassment of a sexual nature has happened to a, a female magic player, in particular, a very vocal female magic player. And her tweets uh, lay it out very clearly. It could not be laid out more. I know some people think that this is like, uh, it's not actual fact, but this is coming from the source. Found out the story, sounds like you two were having casual sex, you doing the same with multiple pros, he dumped you, you didn't like that, you sent Wizard of the Coast unfounded allegations of assault, he lost his job as a result, looks like your broke ass is going to have a defamation suit. 
Uh, Mary says, I really appreciate Magic Esports letting me take all the heat and not making a statement on Owen yet. I waited. I saw this come out yesterday, and I waited because I wanted Wizard of the Coast to make some type of statement like they did for Unsleeve Media. If you guys remember that debacle. So regardless of what you think of Unsleeve Media, who's banned for life and who didn't receive multiple warning bans like Alex, the greatest cheater in Magic, they came out with a statement directly attacking Unsleeve Media. And it's kind of strange that they're not going to say something about this case, which it's Friday. I fully expect it to drop. If they're going to say something, it'll drop at like 5 p.m. this Friday. West Coast time, which is like 8 p.m. East Coast time. So no one will see it and everyone will think, oh, well, whatever happened to that own kid? Oh, no one knows. Okay, we made our official statement and we can move on. Mary says, very pleased with this news. If you don't know why, then you don't know the best kept secret and magic. Owen Torderwall will not be participating in the Mythic Invitation and we will be replacing him with Brian David Marshall. So what I'm saying here is that when you empower a nerd, that nerd isn't... You remember my analogy with people not changing and then people tell me they can change all the time and oh no because you've been treated a certain way when you were in elementary school you have been bullied in elementary you've been bullied in middle school when you've been bullied in high school you've been bullied if some of these people go to college maybe they've been bullied in college uh, on the rare occasion for a magic player if they have a job maybe they've been bullied by their boss so when you continue to get bullied and then suddenly you become famous for playing a children's card game, and that's what it is, let's be honest. Yes, there's a million dollar prize, and yes, you can get rich from this game, but it is still a card game made for children. Then suddenly you look at everyone and you think that you deserve respect. Efro is a, another good example of this where he went to an FNM. Uh, he lost a few games, he rage quits, and then he banned everyone at the FNM by reporting them to Wizards of the Coast. I just find it kind of weird. Or when Efro expected people to uh, concede to him for, quote, future benefits, end quote. And he wrote an entire article slamming the guy who conceded. I don't know why you go to a GP. I think, you know, you go to a GP to play magic, right? Not to concede to other people who are more popular than you. And this is the mentality of the professional magic scene. All of them are criminals. All of them are scum. And you will learn more about... So, Owen, I'm surprised. This one came out of left field. I have not heard bad things about Owen. Um, I, I don't know. I've heard very bad things about other people who I've talked about before. Um, but Owen, actually, I haven't heard anything bad about him, and I am surprised to hear this, but I'm not shocked. Um, this is not any different from Frank when you approach teenagers who are sitting by themselves and may also be nerds and may also be vulnerable. I don't want to say females are vulnerable because then people will slam me and say, oh, you know, equal justice, social justice, mad justice. And, but you understand, like, if someone's sitting alone at a lunch table in high school and they're not popular and they're lonely and it's depressing, yeah, they can be subject to being bullied and taken advantage of because they don't have anyone to stand up for them and they're not standing up for themselves. So when, um, someone goes to a magic tournament, let's say uh, she has a lot of female friends, but not many of her friends play magic. And that's pretty demographically spot on. And she goes to play magic for the first time. And hey, this really professional magic pro, Owen or Frank or LSV or someone else approaches her and says, hey, you know, um, do you want to, you know, I'll check out your deck and do you want to, and then it gets to back to the hotel room and, and then there's automated texts that are sent out to hundreds of women because, you know, you go to multiple GPs in Magic Pro. I guess they're called Magic Fest now, but if you go to a Magic Fest, your goal is to attract five females 
and then you know you've gone to let's say 50 magic fest now you have 250 females that you're texting it's really hard to keep up so you just make one text and you copy and paste it right frank is that how it goes so these magic professionals i am not too shocked to hear these accusations and they are and many of you will say why are you putting it out there it's already out there it's already out in the web and i feel like the only way to prevent this from happening is to punish and if wizard of coast will do a minor slap on the wrist and the story is kind of icky and other youtubers are not going to cover said story because it is icky and this will be demonetized i'm sure um there, there's no one left to cover the story there's no one left to say that this uh, this behavior this uh, potential behavior which i don't doubt from mary that it is i don't doubt that it is true or at least she believes her side is true and owen was removed with the day before without much no or very recently before the event without very without notice um, there was no notice, there was no explanation, there was just a removal and a replacement. That's very sketchy to me. Um, Owen is an extremely popular MTG Arena streamer. He's an extremely popular Magic player for may maybe more than a decade. For you, him, him to receive this treatment, um, again, most people thought it was a health reason, but it is not a health reason. So we will see. Um, we will see what happens, but this is what, so essentially, this is the experiment that uh, had people did in Stanford in psychology, where you had a bunch of students, and you made some of them jailers, the people running the jail, jail and then you made some, or I guess you made some of them guards, that would be them, and then you made some of them prisoners, and these were just regular students, and then within a week, they actually start beating each other and the prisoners start acting rebellious as prisoners. And the jailers or the guards start acting as guards. When you make someone who's not popular in high school, not popular in middle school, because those things, these, if have you look at pictures of the, these clearly are not athletes, right? I, when I went to high school, video games was not popular. And that's the same age as Owen, LSV, Frank. Um, even they're older than me, so they, Frank especially, um, they probably have experienced this even more than I have. And yet, here we have a scenario where more and more of this hashtag Me Too movement is happening in magic. And I don't... So let me word this carefully. I've tried to... Uh, go around the landmines, but still try to represent my actual point of view. When somebody is given power, who's never had power before, who has been abused, they will tend to abuse the people they have power over. This is true for a Magic the Gathering judge, as we found out in multiple cases. This is true for a high school teacher. This is true for... Okay, I'm just going to slam it. And this is nothing against high school teachers. This is only targeting those people who, um, on the news, you read, oh, so-and-so high school teacher uh, from your childhood is now, you know, he's been assaulting females for the last 10, 20 years. There are certain jobs that don't really have respect um, based on pay. So if I if I assume that jobs that are more respectful or highly paid and jobs that are less respectful or not paid as much. And again, that is a very bad assumption to make, but I'm going to, for this argument and to get convey my point, I'm going to make that assumption. Then people who, who may not even have jobs are kind of at the lowest rung, right? So when you're a professional magic player, you don't actually have a nine to five job. You don't have a W2 job. You don't have a job that pays you insurance. At most, you're writing articles for a website or streaming. And in, mo in society, um, if we went back 20 years ago and we compared the salary, uh, we compared the living standard, living in your mom's basement and so on. Again, I'm very careful because I don't want to offend. I 
Okay, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. If you guys have stuck with me for this long, I'm going to go for it. I think that magic professionals who are only magic professionals are in a very psychological, are in a category of their own psychologically. In that in any other arena, they would be, in any other society, they would be viewed as pariahs. Um, not high, not stable income. Definitely we can, we can make the point that it's not stable income. Income is probably not very high, yet they're being promoted by Wizards of the Coast. They're being promoted to a large audience who, and they might live off donations like Wedge and Tolarian Community College. Do they completely live off donations? They don't have jobs. They may, they may have never had jobs. They may never have had a nine to five W-2 paycheck every two week job. And because of that, they live in a reality that is different from mine and most people's where everything is tailored to them. So for them and their perspective, the female magic player, of course, should be attracted to them because why not? Everything else has worked out for them. Uh, they don't even need a job. They don't need um, health insurance. Many of them, I would, I, I would say 99% of them on, do not have health insurance, as we saw from the WEDs. If you're, you don't have responsi life responsibilities, if you don't know what it's like out there in the real, and you're given power, that is like North Korea bad. That's really bad. Anyway. Subscribe to my other channel, guys. Bye.